Property Patriot, you are cleared hot. Welcome to the AMI Podcast. Today's guest is Kyle Healy. He's a dedicated husband, father, army officer, and software engineer who's transitioning into a long-term real estate investor. Kyle's journey began with a deployment in 2019 to 2020, just as he and his wife were expecting their first child. Unable to be home for this event due to COVID-19, his life-altering moment steered him towards real estate investment. His ultimate aim? To create a passive income stream that allowed him more quality time with his family. Here's how he's accomplished that and more, where we provide real estate investors the tools to achieve generational wealth. This is the AMI Podcast, show number 47. Good day, high flyers, and welcome to the AIM High Podcast. I am the Property Patriot and your host, Bud Evans, and today we are joined by Kyle Healy. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing well, Bud. How are you doing? Doing great, man. Can you do me a favor and just give me a quick introduction? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Kyle Healy. I'm a husband, father, army officer, and then really software engineer that has been trying to turn into a real estate investor long term. That's a quick down and dirty of me. You'll see my family's kind of the flowing why throughout my whole life and why I get into all this stuff. So I'll bring that up a couple of times as we talk through here. I'm sure, man. It's like our go-to, right? It's God, mm -hmm. family, country, so to yep. speak. So let's start with your army career. Uh, where did you start with that? To be honest, these are going to tie together. My army career, I started at the University of Dayton. I did ROTC and then really fast forwarding a little bit. I basically picked up my first deployment in 2019, 2020. And like maybe a month before I left, my wife found out we were pregnant, which is right exactly what we wanted. We were on board with it. But basically, my daughter was born while I was gone. She was born like the beginning of COVID, so I couldn't come home for it. And then pretty much that leads directly into my real estate story. So for me, it's how do I spend more time with my family? How do I spend more time with my daughter, my now son, my wife? And all that came to be after missing four months of her life. It, I jumped into real estate because, like, hey, let's start building this passive income machine so that in a decade, whatever, two decades, whatever it takes, I get more time with my kids. Right. So it actually all ties together between the army, the deployment, straight into having a kid to, hey, real estate is my avenue to make money for my future self to be able to spend more time with my, my kids. Great. And it works, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It does. It's, to me, you got to pick something. In real estate, something I understood. It was a tangible asset. I could pull the levers to make things happen, whether it's rehabs, operations, whatever, to be able to improve it long term. So I like being able to, that I could actually do something to improve it. Yeah. And so now from the army, SOPs, regulations, checklists, what was mm -hmm. your first deal like? Did you just jump right into it? Did you get a mentorship program? How, how did it work? Yeah. I basically, I knew I wanted to get into real estate while I was deployed. So I spent four or five months or whatever really digging through the bigger pockets, the all these websites on how do I buy real estate? And I wasn't comfortable enough doing something while I was overseas. So I just was absorbing knowledge. Um, and then as soon as I got back, it, I understood that there is risks involved, but I understood that if I have a reserve, it will account for what I don't know. So I just pretty much, I found a investor-friendly realtor and we started looking at properties. And the crazy part is like the first one, like I wasn't even there. I was living in another state. He like walked me through on FaceTime. And I was like, I don't want to jump too fast, but this seems good. Yeah. So I pretty much bought the first one that we looked at. We looked at a couple others, like throughout the time that we were under contract and everything I looked at, I was like, I'm so happy I went under contract on this first one. So it was a, a property was a duplex, so I knew I wanted to get into multifamily for from the beginning. I, I the one mortgage, one tenant thing deterred me and pushed me to multifamily early. So duplex is something I could afford. Purchase price was eighty thousand dollars, so it wasn't like astronomical. It was enough that I, I could save up for that down payment on my own. And then I knew basically I had two tenants in there from the get go. One of them was empty. Uh, worked out pretty well, like probably around $2,000 kind of cosmetic rehab I put into nice. it just to kind of get it to that rent ready state. But they were renting out basically 650 and 750 off the bat right there. 
Fantastic, is, man. So you're already excellent. well above that 1% rule thing. Mm-hmm. So that's great. And that's your first deal. You just fell right into it and it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> Good and bad about it is it started out well. I was like super stoked about it. And then hard to hit that and replay that over and over again. There's a couple other deals that I did that we'll get into that were not as well, not a, what you call a home run on that one, but that one, I'm so happy that I jumped in kind of full force into that deal. Yeah, man. Now, how many doors do you currently have? So right now I'm at 22 units. Okay. So I've been, I basically started 2020, picked up two duplexes in 2020 and then a 10 unit in 2021. And then I knew I was missing that, that whole contractor piece and doing the burst strategy. So took a step back from the scale and how do I fix this, not having the contractor piece under my belt. So I, I did one of those in 2022 and then I've been trying to pretty much aggressively scale this year from there. That's great, man. So let's go through it. Cause you know, not everything is always pretty, right? What there's always the one story. So what happened? Yeah. So for me, it was the 10 unit I bought. Mm-hmm. So it was problem after problem. So I was, I basically had two duplexes that were going well. I was like, Oh, time to just scale this up and we'll see what happens. So I found a 10 unit. I basically, I got it for almost $150,000 under asking price. So like I did some good negotiating there. And then after I got it, just, I, there were pieces of the numbers that I missed. One of them is the real, or the taxes. So I took their current taxes and my limited mind was just, Hey, I'll drop that in. That's what I pay. And I thought I was good to go. And that is not the case. And it came back. I went from a $6,000 tax bill to when it was reassessed a $14,000 tax bill. And the numbers like that's pretty hard on the cash flow when you drop that much. I bought that property knowing that I'm basically going to hold that for Mm -hmm. 18 years. That's basically my daughter's college fund or first down payment on a house or whatever. So like, I know there's time for me to fix that and get out of it. But if I didn't set aside the reserves I did for that, I would have tanked that property from the beginning. Not to mention that unit has, or that property has caused me other problems. I had a tenant pass away in one of the units and it was days before somebody found him. And I don't want to get into too many things, but like we had to have a biohazard unit come in and basically tear apart most of the unit. We had probably four or five months of bed bugs that we couldn't get rid of. So it was just like a massive headache. So that deal alone, it's been a problem for me. I'm in the process. I've been slowly like turning units and basically getting rents up, converting them to nicer units. So I know long-term this deal will work out for me, but it is, it's had a, a couple good months to year and a half of just negative for me. <laughs> but listen, everything in real estate, it's not wait to buy real estate. It's buy real estate and wait. Eventually mm-hmm. it'll come back around. Are you, have you made the turn yet? Have you rounded the corner? Yeah. So I would say so not just from that property, but the education of properties and the things you learn on one deal that you can roll to the next one. And that mistake, I was going to make it at some point. I was, I don't really hear people talking about, make sure you look at the reassessed tax value and how that could burn you in the end. And it's something I should have looked at something I should have known, but I won't make that mistake again. And I'm looking at, I basically teamed up with some people and we're looking at bigger properties now. And if I would have made that same mistake on a 30, 60 unit, like that'll tank the entire deal. So to me, I would say I turned the corner in regards to being able to take those things I learned on each of deals and adding them to the next one to find better deals long-term. Yeah, man. It's it, every time that there's a mistake made in real estate, I, I just look at it like I just paid for some education. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, it happens, right? It happens to the best of us. And it as long as you're learning and you're progressing, and listen, I'm gonna tell you, you go from six thousand to sixteen thousand. That's a single family home in New Jersey. That's mm-hmm. that's insane. Not listen, anytime your taxes raise a hundred percent, a hundred plus percent, that's sad, but at least it wasn't thirty five, forty thousand. 
Yeah, agreed. And it's, again, as I'm saying, I would have made that mistake one day. It's just, I'm glad I made it on a property of that size versus a multi million dollar property that would have came back and bit me later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, was there any notification at all or did they just, hey, here's your new tax bill? No. So the, I guess there was some notification. Basically, Ohio, the, the school boards here are relentless about if a property sells, they want their updated tax cut. Yep. Um, so they basically said, hey, we're we're essentially coming after you to raise your tax bill. And I was like, <laughs> I called an attorney. I was like, is there anything I can do about this? They're like, you sold, like you bought the property. You're not really going to win this one. So I knew it was coming and that allowed me to basically stash aside more money to be able to eat that tax bill. But like throughout, it's going to take me a little longer to catch up to that. Hey, we're back on the even scale from raising rents than I would have liked, but it's living you learn. <laughs> and I, I invest in Pittsburgh, not too far from Ohio, but still a completely mm -hmm. different state. And we pay somewhere between three to $500 per property on about 50% of our properties out there to try to, because every year they try to reassess us every yeah. year. 50% we'll get somewhere around 15 properties where we'll get notification that, Hey, we're going to reassess your, your taxes. It's brutal, man. It's brutal. Yeah. They want their pound of flesh before they even, you know, <laughs> before you even get a scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you currently working on? So right now I actually have teamed up with a couple people in uh, the war room masterminds, the yeah. mastermind for veterans, real estate investors that we're both part of. We're going after, we basically went from smaller deals to like looking at much bigger deals and trying to syndicate properties. So we have offers in on everything from 30 units to 100 unit properties, all in the multifamily space. Deals are obviously hard to come by. So we're looking there. We've also looked at the self-storage space a little bit. This was because we found a couple deals that were it was a weird mix of multifamily and self-storage together. So we just started figuring out how to underwrite self-storage as well. So those are the two asset classes that we're looking at, but basically jumping into the syndication space now and trying to get that up and running. So That's awesome, man. You're going into the shark infested waters when you, yep. <laughs> you start looking at those 75 plus unit buildings. All of a sudden you're dealing with, now you're dealing with, Dave Perret. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, guys like that, that can walk into a, a building that big and just go, yeah, I want this. Let's go. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And that, that's something we've actually talked about is because there's a little bit of, we know that the three of us are coming in with essentially no track record. Yeah. So how do we still go after these bigger properties with no track record? And we've talked about everything from, hey, how do we not go where it's like the super hot markets or how do we just find a co-sponsor that wants to come in with us that can bring that track record with them. So it, I mean, different problems, but end of the day, like it, it's still real estate. You underwrite it in a pretty similar manner. The numbers are still the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Have you reached out to anybody in our group? Yeah. I've actually talked to a couple people within the war room about really just either full co-sponsoring the deals or just helping us get through some of the learning curves of, Hey, how do we go from analyzing a 10 unit to a 50 unit? Yeah. They're the same numbers still, but there's a more efficient way to do it over here that you can do it faster. You can pull the correct data. So we've reached out to a couple different people between our war room squads. Cause we're in two different ones. And then uh, as well, just across the war room, if we have questions or, uh, we're looking at, hey, this is a deal size. Is anybody interested in sponsoring with us? We've had some good feedback from the war room. I, I would, to me, whether it's the war room or another mastermind, whatever you're going after, it it's worth it to be able to get you there and put yourself around people that understand it. Yeah, I keep this here. My wife laughs at me. She bought me this thing, asked me to, hey, you can put your Wi-Fi password up there. I'm like, it's on camera. Why would I? But what I did was I took the where it says network and I put net worth. So you know, uh, there you I go. fully believe that network is your net worth and that mm -hmm. no matter what situation you get into, there's always somebody who's been there that you can ask for advice. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Tony Robbins basically 
said something to the effect of if somebody's done it before, steal what they did, and the probability is that you'll be successful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Yep. And that's the nice part about real estate is it, it's not complicated. And hundreds of people have done it before us. Just ask or do as much work as you can until you get stuck and then ask and someone yeah. will help you out. So, yeah, a great point. Great point. Now, you talked about scaling. So, is that what's on the horizon? Is that what your future holds? You're going to blow this thing up? Yeah. So, that's the plan long term. I would like to be able to essentially scale up within this arena and then at some point expand out. So, like, me and my par partners, we're looking more end of the day, like how do we become essentially like a family office where we are helping basically investors grow their net worth through any way we can. Mm -hmm. Our preferred path right now is real estate because it's something we understand. But at some point, hey, how do we add a business that matches real estate, whether it's a property management company, a title company, something that we already know that we're actively using already. But end of the day is we want to build something that get our investors the returns they're looking for and mm -hmm. right now, instead of spreading ourselves a hundred different ways, like real estate and multifamily self storage are the two av avenues that we're going to get there as fast as possible. Excellent, man. Listen, I just started vertical integration for my property management company to myself to self manage the properties in Jersey. Oh yeah. You will not believe the simplicity of it and <laughs> how much, how little you can spend versus how much you actually save in the long run. Okay. I so, believe that. Yeah. I believe that for sure. Yeah. Getting ready to partner with my broker. I'm licensed in Jersey, getting ready to partner with a broker to actually take that and try to make, we pr pretty much be instantly 500 doors, go from like 20 doors okay. personally to 500, like just. Be awesome. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. That and then efficiencies of scale right there are huge. Exactly. Right. You can then afford to bring in virtual assistants to go through your books, mm -hmm. make sure your software is up to date, make sure your processes and procedures yeah. are followed. You know, and then you're involved with the right real estate group, the right brokerage. You can just have people start showing your apartments. And then mm -hmm. when they become investors, they bring you theirs. So it's yeah. all good stuff. That's great. Yeah, man. <laughs> Growing and scaling is like the name of the game, right? Now, yeah, not. I, I'll follow up is, with that question before I even let you answer it. I'm going to ask you, is that the thing that you learned or is there another thing that you've learned as you've been progressing through this process, through this journey? Uh, what's the one thing that you learned as your wealth increased? Yeah, absolutely. So to me, it's don't wait in life. Like there, there's things that are worth holding back that uh, we call it delayed gratification for, mm -hmm. but like there's other things that are, are worth going after. And whether it is real estate or for me, like my why is my family, I'm building this real estate empire to spend more time with my family. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I'm going to wait 20 years to actually go hang out with them? Like how about I set aside an hour, two hours, whatever that is today to go spend time with them. So as my wealth grows, I pull more and more time back into things that are it's super important to me. And that's, my family, my kids, my health. And so I, I don't give that up anymore for, Hey, I can go analyze one more deal today, or I can go get my workout in, or I can go spend an hour before my daughter goes to bed. That's an easy decision for me. Yeah. My end goal is to spend more time with them. So if I miss out on one deal today, I'm still getting what I want at the end of the day. It's just today instead of 20 years from now. Great, man. And it's a great why. Great why to have, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you the number of times you've been deployed or anything like that, but uh, how much, I, I don't even want to put this that way, but um, the amount of time and yeah, thanks for your service, by the way, I know you're still serving, but like mm -hmm. you, the amount of time that you spend away from home, uh, one of the reasons that I gravitated towards this was simply for the same reason, but the amount of time that you spend away from your family, people don't grasp that that is the biggest sacrifice. And it's not only your sacrifice, it's theirs. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It's actually something that I I told my unit before I was deployed. So I deployed in command and I talked to the families and I was like, basically said thank you to them. I was like, 
we all know as service members what we signed up for. Mm -hmm. The families just get dragged along. Whether they know it or not, they don't really realize the sacrifice that comes with. So I agree with you 100%. Like that time and away is the hardest part about it. And anything you can do to spend more time with your family is super important to me. Yeah. So I'm just going to ask you, man, how long until you're able to push that button and punch? Uh, so it it's hard. Like I like it a lot still. So it, it tears me between I could walk away from the army right now, but I, I enjoy it enough. It's, I think the hardest part would be if they come back and say, Hey, we need you to deploy again. I think that's where I would struggle, mm -hmm. especially because I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And when I was gone, when she was just born, it's easier to not be there. But when they start understanding that you're going to be gone for a long amount of time, I, I think that's where I'm going to struggle. So, yeah. You know what? I went through one of my reintegra reintegration, they call it reintegration. I find that yeah. funny that you go through these briefings and it's, we're going to pull you away from your family for three days and send you to a hotel in the middle of nowhere so that you can just go through these courses. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, we're pulling you back away from your family. But we're going to call it a reintegration course, right? Yep. <laughs> Maybe your wife is lucky enough to be able to go with you, but if she works, you're, it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. We went through this reintegration course and everyone's putting their hands up and who's been deployed one time, everybody puts their hands up Two hands up three, four, five. They got the five and I was the only one left with my hands up. And they said to me, how many times? When you do the math, it was seven and a half total years of my life between yeah. deployments and schools and training seminars and all that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. It's a big draw on the families and people don't take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. You know? Agreed. Yeah. So, and when you get to the 1.2 to 1.3 times your earnings and they come back to you and they go, Hey, we'd like you to go to X country for 240 days or 180 yeah. days or 365 day minimum. You go, mm. uh, I nope. don't know. It's not time to go. You've got the light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Hey, are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? The Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today, and we'll help you elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. The Aim High REI is on Facebook, or click on the link in the show notes. And the best part, it's completely free to join. Good. So let's go through the soaring four. These are the same four questions that I ask every guest that can help someone who is just starting out achieve new heights. When you're ready. All right. I'm sorry. Question. No, it's okay. Question number one is what do you use to keep you motivated? Okay. Yeah. So it's hundred percent my family. So I, everything I do is for them. Like I told you, I bought that 10 unit apartment complex for my daughter when she was born. Right now I'm looking for the next property for my son but it's literally just them. They are my driving force. They're the reason that I get up. They're the reason that I spend late nights looking for properties, whatever it is, like everything I do is for them. Excellent. What is one thing that you learned that completely changed your mindset? So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but it, it's really that delayed gratification is great. And you hear this all the time in real estate investing. The longer you can wait, the better it is, but don't sacrifice your why for it. Yeah. So paying yourself in the future to give up your time with, for me, my family right now, isn't worth it to me. So yeah, I can delay as much as I want, but at the end of the day, if I'm giving up time with my family, I'm doing it wrong. So just know what your why is and then being able to start integrating that into your life right now. Yeah. Well put. What tools do you use to keep yourself on track? So this is, I live and die by my calendar. So my yeah. Google calendar, I have six, seven different versions of my calendar, everything from my family calendar and where we travel to multiple work real estate calendars. So those all integrate into a single Google calendar. I use that for 95% of my day. Then after that, Asana is where I track a lot of my actual to-do tasks and move them around that way. And then Slack is the other, other big one. The last piece is like a consistent weekly battle rhythm for my teams and like an actual mm -hmm. team sync. Great. And then if you had to start all over, yeah, let me try that again. 
if you had to start all over again, what is one thing that you would change? Only thing I would change is think bigger sooner. So I knew I wanted to get into multifamily, so I jumped in at the duplex. And that's where I wanted to go. Um, but I really limited myself with essentially my capital until I started teaming up with people and moving to things that were quote unquote outside of my price range. And then doors just started opening up because you could start saying, Hey, how do I find a better property manager? How do I start looking at how do I get other people investments too? So think bigger sooner and you'll figure out some of these pieces you don't know. You still have to go figure out real estate anyways. You might as well figure out at a bigger scale. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. No doubt. All right. Kyle, thank you very much for your time. Once again, thank you very much for your service and thank your family for me as well, please. I'll see you around on the war room. Is So here's the thing. Now, I know how to get in touch with you, but if somebody else wanted to, how would they do that? Yeah, there's a couple of easy ways. My email address is kyle at creatinggenerationalfire.com. I'm also on Instagram at creatinggenerationalfire.com. And that's actually my website as well, creatinggenerationalfire.com. That's outstanding. Basically, quickly stands for financial independence. And then I changed it to real estate because I don't plan on retiring early. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Hey, that whole fire movement, I'm trying to talk my son into it. He's, he's 31. So love yeah, to see him it's a, a good, jump into that. Good movement it opens up a lot of doors, too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, again, thank you very much for being on and taking time out of your day. Thanks, bud. All right. For those of you watching on YouTube or on your fame, for those of you watching on YouTube or those of you listening on your favorite podcast, my goodness, those of you listening on your favorite podcast platform or watching on YouTube, until the next time we meet, aim high.